So I'm in the smoking section of this club and my friends, the two guys that I was with, drank too much and I just didn't feel like being with them because for me, when I go out, I don't get wasted to the point where I don't know where I am and stuff like that. So these guys that I went out with that night, they just ended up wasted. So I ended up leaving them. Um, I don't know where they got to, but I ended up in the smoking section of this club. Now I'm just chilling there with my Desperado. I think I may have been playing on my phone. And this girl and this other guy were in the smoking section as well. And they were also drinking Desperados. So I don't know how it happened, but I looked up. They looked up at me at the same time. And we says, oh, Desperado, cheers. I think it was the guy who said, cheers, Desperado. Um, and the girl, I remember the girl's name. The girl's name was Becky. I can't remember the guy's name, um, but the guy was gay. So they were out together and we met in the smoking section. And obviously the, the conversation, we started talking about Desperados and then we started talking about other drinks. And then they asked me who I was with. And at that point, I was going to tell them that, you know, my friends was inside, but I just, I didn't feel the need to lie. So I just told them that, you know, I've left my friends, they're drunk somewhere. I'm just going to have probably one more and then I'm going to hit the road. So they said, well, why don't you come and, well, in fact, it was Becky who said, why don't you come and um, have a dance with us? And truthfully, I'm thinking this is a bit weird. Um, it's going to be a bit awkward. But the night was drawing to a close and I thought, you know what? Why not? I'm just going to have another drink and go home anyway. So. <laughs> Went back into the club and music was pumping and so we all was just having a little dance it was a bit awkward because i don't have any gay friends and it was <laughs> you can imagine i'm trying to like dance with becky but she's already out with her gay friend and i'm being friendly with the with i'm gonna i'm not gonna keep calling him the gay friend i'm just gonna call him Lewis okay so just for argument's sake the gay guy I didn't remember his name we're gonna call him Lewis for the story now I'm being friendly with Lewis as well because you know both of them are being friendly to me but this is a drinking dancing situation and it was awkward I'll be honest um, I didn't dance too much because I could see Lewis was getting a bit close and I thought, nah, don't do that. <laughs> Just don't do that. Um, so this was a crazy thing because I didn't see any signals from Becky at all about anything. I just thought it was just a friendly exchange. Uh, I'd have one drink with them and I'd just go home. So when Lewis wasn't looking, Becky grabbed my groin and squeezed. And I'm not a dizzy guy. I'm not silly. That is more or less the biggest signal you can send to a guy. So my brain switched. So I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> so then we carried on dancing and I started to get a bit closer to Becky. And I could see clear that she was interested in something else. 
But this is a difficult one because obviously she's out with Lewis and I can't exactly just take her away from him. So as it happens, I was working on the taxes at that time. And believe me, I could tell you many stories about working on the taxes in Liverpool. But I was working on the taxes that, at that time. And like I said, I was just having one more drink and then I was heading home. So Becky said to Lewis that, you know, she feels like calling it a night as well. And obviously I offered them a lift home. I didn't realise that they lived all the way in Formby, um, which is outside of Liverpool. It's close, but it's a fair bit away. So we're driving to Formby. Becky's in the front and Lewis is in the back. Well, he's in the middle with his head. He just couldn't sit back, obviously. He's like a little child in, in the back of the, the car. A lot more emotional than Becky is. But he's got his head in the middle and he just can't stop talking. So we're driving to Formby. And on the way to Formby, I'm thinking, how, how is this going to work? Because I already found out that she lives with her parents and Lewis lives with his parents and stuff like that. So... The idea was to come to Formby and drop Lewis at his house first. Because obviously once Lewis is dropped off, then the floodlights are on, the gates are open. But Lewis was making this awkward. He kept saying... Oh, Becky, you sure you're going to be all right? I don't want to leave you on your own in case anything happens. And, and I'm thinking, come on, bro. Seriously? But he just wouldn't stop talking. And finally, we managed to drop him at his house. He got, he got off. And then finally, we got off. Now, as soon as I started to drive, once Lewis had got out of the car, she grabbed my groin again. And she started to un buckle my belt now I'm in Formby now I don't really know where I'm going so I said to her is there anywhere we can go and just chill so she's directing me I think she's trying to direct me to Formby Beach where we can park up somewhere and just um, you know so we get to Formby Beach, I think it's Formby Beach or somewhere near Formby Beach. And then windows started to steam up on the car. But you know what it was? I think the two of us were just too big for the car. We just couldn't, it just wasn't comfortable. I just, I couldn't get the angles that I needed to get. You know what I mean. Hashtag BPA. So ever since we left Lewis, he'd just been constantly texting and trying to phone Becky to see if she'd got home okay. And it was getting a bit annoying. She was replying at first. And then she just stopped replying because I think he wanted to... I think he wanted her to phone him when he got home. And it's like, bro... Just give up, man. I know, because I think he, he knew that I wasn't dropping her home, that we were we were up to more than just dropping her home. Oh. But there's nothing he could do about it. Um, so anyway, we left where we were parked up, and I just said to her, look, we might as well just come back to mine. She agreed. We got back to mine and fireworks. The crazy thing is throughout all this time, this girl had a boyfriend. <laughs> and I don't know whether she felt that he was gonna call her or 
he was going to go to the house and find out she wasn't there. But after the fireworks, the deadlift, the back session, I was just knackered. I was just laying on the bed and I was just ready to sleep. And then maybe in the morning, This girl at about 4.30 a.m. is asking me to drop her home. I'm like, are you for real? <laughs> she was panicking. So I ended up dropping her back home. And I think because I was a bit pissed off, we never spoke again. Um, she had a boyfriend anyway. But just thinking back to the whole situation, it was crazy. Meeting them in the smoking section and them saying to me, oh, do you want to just come for a dance? So this was a crazy two nights. After everything that happened with Becky and Lewis, her gay friend, the next day, as I said, I was working on the taxis at the time. I'm not gonna name the taxi firm because it's one of the biggest in Liverpool. But anyway, I was working the next day and obviously I'd had a sleep and I'd recovered and I'd had some good food and i was on the job it was one of those nights it was a busy night i think the races were on and there's just a lot of people in town so i'd had a few fares you know i was in and out of town i did one to manchester and back and then it was getting a bit late and a job came through and it was to pick up somebody from the police station so when the name came through it came through on the radio as on the screen sorry as kaylee now i was thinking well this could be you know picking up someone from the police station at this time on a weekend and it's obviously not good it's not a good situation so I pulled up outside the police station and there was just one person outside and it was a blonde girl standing there in a short skirt, some high heels. I was thinking, nah, it can't be. She walked up to the car and she confirmed her name and she jumped in. So I asked her where she was going and she told me to go in the direction of Crosby. The Crosby is about five miles out of Liverpool, not too far. As I'm heading towards Crosby, I'm asking, you know, conversation started and I want to know why, why I'm picking him up from the police station at this time of night, dressed like that. And the story goes, she had an argument with her boyfriend in town and I think he got a bit violent with her. And as he was getting violent with her, the police actually saw what was going on. So they went to restrain him 
and he got a bit physical and he got locked up. So she was just left by herself and she didn't want to go home. She said that was the last place she wants to go because when they let him out, they lived together. So she just want, she, she didn't want to go home. So we were heading towards Crosby. She said she knew somebody up there. So on the way there, she was messing about in her bag and stuff like that and messing about with her phone. She was trying to contact somebody in Crosby to um, let them know that we were on the way. That person was not responding. Uh, and I could see that she was a bit frustrated. So she started calling around all different people, messaging people. And then she called some other guy, some friend that she knew. And it was on a, like a loud speak. I don't know if it was on a loud speak or the phone was just loud. And she was telling him what the situation was. and. You know, I could hear a lot of guys in the background and it was kind of boisterous and he was like, yeah, yeah, come down, you can stay here. So then she says to turn around and head in the direction of, I think it was Walton. So she said to head in that direction. The conversation's still going, by the way, and she's a bit uncomfortable. She's a bit, I could tell she's a bit uncomfortable about going to this address because she was telling me that she doesn't really know the person. She hasn't really known them for that long. And funny enough, I, I had a feeling this would happen, but it's not something that I tried to get out of her. But she turned around and obviously she heard the accent and she asked me where I'm from and who do I live with? And you know, how long have I been in Liverpool? So when I told her that I live by myself, the aura inside the taxi just, it lifted and she started to smile with me. <laughs> ah, these girls, these girls make me laugh, seriously. So a few more questions later, she wanted to come to my house. And like, like a true gentleman, there was only one thing I could do. So you can imagine this is a bit of a madness. I mean, all that yesterday with Becky and Lewis, her gay friend, and then this today. I've been with this girl for like 40 odd minutes. I'm thinking, you know what? I can take you back to my house, but I'm gonna need to get paid for this fare. <laughs> you know, I don't mess about. Listen, I'm out here working and it's always work before pleasure. So she said, yeah, cool. She'll pay for the fare. So I said, you know what? We may as well stop off and get some drinks. So we stopped off. I think she needed to get something else. So we stopped off at a supermarket, Asda. Couldn't find anywhere else. So the closest place was at Asda. We just stopped there, got some drinks, got some other stuff. And then we headed to my house. I turned my meter off. You know, when I think back, yeah, I should have really con continued working because it was a busy night. I could have made some money that night. But when you live in Liverpool and you're a single bachelor like me, you can basically do what you want. So we headed to my house and she was telling me about her boyfriend and the situation and truthfully, I just didn't care. I've got my own problems. I wasn't trying to hear about yours. We got in the house and I always like to just set the scene and just chill for a sec and just, you know, depending on who I'm with, obviously. So I just kick back you know, rolled a little smoke and she's like, whoa. <laughs> I don't know if girls say this just to like boost men's ego or 
she was actually being truthful i don't really take it to my head any anymore when i was younger yeah but she's like whoa that's big and obviously she's referring to the aubergine downstairs the manhood and she's just she keeps telling me that oh it's big and it's and i'm thinking to myself i'm with this every day i know the size like you don't need to I don't need to, um, I don't need my ego boosted. I think she was just genuinely shocked. Oh. Fireworks again, second night running, and I'm going in this time, deadlift, lower back. She's getting the works. <laughs> you know what the crazy thing about, after all that, when I think back, these two girls had boyfriends. Oh. You know, you hear all the time that men cheat. Men cheat, that's all you ever hear. For years I've been hearing men cheat. But these two girls had boyfriends. And I actually called her a taxi to take her home after that or take her wherever she wanted to go because I wasn't going back out after that. I'd been drinking, so that was me for the night. But I just thought I'd share these two stories with you. Thanks for listening. I'll see you on the other side.